people laughed. A few people cried. Most people were silent. Hello and welcome to the Unexplained YouTube channel. In this video, we'll take a look at the life of Julius Robert Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was a brilliant physicist who played a key role in the development of the atomic bomb during World War II. He was also a complex and controversial figure, and his legacy continues to be debated today. So let's dive into the video. Julius Robert Oppenheimer was born to a prosperous and well-connected family on April 22, 1904, in New York City. His mother, Ella Friedman Oppenheimer, was a housewife, and his father, Julius Oppenheimer, was a prosperous businessman. Helen and Catherine were Oppenheimer's two younger sisters. A naturalist, Oppenheimer studied science. Early interest in minerals led him to correspond with the New York Mineralogical Club, which was so moved by his writings that they invited him to give a lecture even though he was only 12 years old at the time. He went to Harvard University in 1922 to pursue a chemistry degree. A love of physics led the young Oppenheimer down a different scientific path, even though he graduated first in his class three years later. He then traveled to Cambridge, England, to start his graduate physics studies. Undertaking research at the Cavendish Laboratory with J. J. Thompson, the person who discovered the electron. Oppenheimer began his study of the atom after Thompson. A year later, Oppenheimer was in Germany attending the University of Göttingen, one of the foremost centers for theoretical physics in the world. Max Born, the head of the Institute of Theoretical Physics, had extended the invitation, and he was soon mingling with future luminaries in science. He published a number of papers while he was living in Germany that advanced the field of quantum theory. The Born-Oppenheimer Approximation for Molecular Wave Functions, a significant contribution to the quantum molecular theory that attracted widespread acclaim in the scientific community, is one noteworthy piece of work. Oppenheimer had earned his doctorate by 1927 and had accepted appointments as a professor at the California Institute of Technology and the University of California, Berkeley. He commuted between the two universities for the following 13 years, carrying out significant research in numerous scientific fields, such as astrophysics, quantum field theory, and nuclear physics. The existence of black holes was predicted in a 1939 paper written by Oppenheimer and another of his students, Hartland Snyder. These are still two of his papers that have received the most citations, along with the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. He was three times nominated for the Nobel Prize, but he never took home the award. In the 1930s, Oppenheimer began to become more politically aware and realized that Hitler's Nazi Germany might very well be able to create the first nuclear weapon. America kept a wary eye on Europe's outbreak of war in September 1939. In the early stages of his nation's efforts to create a nuclear weapon, Oppenheimer eagerly joined in. Oppenheimer would Catherine Puning, a radical Berkeley student and former Communist Party member, in 1940. In 1941, the couple gave birth to their first child, Peter, and three years later, Catherine, their second child. In 1942, General Leslie Groves invited J. Robert Oppenheimer to assume the role of scientific director of the Manhattan Project, a top-secret U.S. undertaking to develop the atomic bomb. After Oppenheimer selected a location in Los Alamos, New Mexico, the U.S. Army proceeded to construct a series of laboratories there. To create a bomb unlike any other that the world had ever seen, the top physics minds from America and Europe were brought to Los Alamos. As American taxpayer money poured into the project, Oppenheimer's team of just a few hundred people quickly expanded to several thousand, all under his direction. Despite having little prior experience leading a project of this size, Oppenheimer quickly picked up the necessary skills and paid back General Grove's confidence in him. Oppenheimer and his group were prepared to test their atomic bomb only three years after the project started. On July 16, 
1945, the Trinity test was carried out in Alamogordo, New Mexico, where a nervous Oppenheimer watched from a control bunker as the first nuclear explosion in history broke out. Oppenheimer was seen to exhale heavily in relief after the brilliant flash of light because his team had succeeded. It was reported that his opening statement was, I guess it worked. However, Oppenheimer was troubled by the destructive power of the bomb. He later said that he had known sin when he saw the mushroom cloud rise over the desert. He became a vocal opponent of nuclear weapons, and he warned about the dangers of nuclear proliferation. He later famously recalled that the moment had reminded him of these words from a holy Hindu text. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds the second world war was effectively ended less than a month later when America dropped two atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki According to reports, Oppenheimer was upset that the bomb was used twice because he thought the second bomb wasn't necessary. A few days later, he managed to get a meeting with President Truman where he expressed his disgust at Nagasaki, telling the president that he felt there was blood on his hands. I never want to see that son of a bitch in this office again. The president famously said to his aides after the meeting, the president had little patience for Oppenheimer's moralistic stance. Oppenheimer rose to fame after the war and appeared on the covers of Life and Time. He was appointed head of the Atomic Energy Commission's General Advisory Committee in 1947. Oppenheimer opposed the creation of the more potent hydrogen bomb while he was there, which put him in the crosshairs of those who wanted to take a strong stance against the escalating Soviet threat his adversaries quickly gained control of the situation. Oppenheimer was demoted from his position at the AEC and stripped of all security clearances in 1954 after being accused of having communist sympathies, effectively losing his political influence at the same time. It took almost a decade before the decision was reversed, which shocked the scientific community. President John F. Kennedy died in 1963. Lyndon B. Johnson was president when Kennedy gave Oppenheimer the Enrico Fermi Award. Immediately following JFK's death, Johnson gave it to him. The honor served as both an atoning act and a sign of the renowned. Oppenheimer persisted in pushing for global regulation of atomic energy and nuclear weapons in his later years. Just one year after retiring, he passed away in Princeton, New Jersey, on February 18, 1967, from throat cancer. I think Oppenheimer was a complex and controversial figure. He was a brilliant scientist who helped to develop the atomic bomb, but he was also a man who came to regret the destructive power of his creation. His legacy continues to be debated, but there is no doubt that he was one of the most important scientists of the 20th century. What are your thoughts on Oppenheimer? Write down your opinion in the comment section. And if you found this video helpful, then please share it with your friends. I really appreciate your support. Your likes, shares, and subscriptions help me make more content that you'll enjoy. See you in next video. Till then, take care and thank you for watching the video.